Welcome aboard to the USS Yorktown. Welcome back to the story of Liberty. This is John Bona. Well, it's exciting to be here at the USS Yorktown. It's a, a World War II a vessel, an aircraft carrier that was built, uh, named after the Battle of Yorktown uh, of the American Revolutionary War. It's the uh, fourth U.S. Navy ship to bear uh, that name. World famous ship, defended our nation, uh, a great Navy man in the World War II and in different areas around the world. Join us on this exclusive journey, this adventure into history with a great ship, the USS Yorktown. Okay, join us on the journey up to the flight deck and the bridge. Here we go. The Yorktown was commissioned in April of 1943 and participated in several campaigns in the Pacific Seas. Check this out. This is the Combat Information Center. Check out the equipment they used here. It's incredible. What you are hearing in the background is radio traffic from the USS Hancock during her service in the South Pacific. The Donald Duck effect that you hear is interference and is due to the radio technology of the air. At the American flag. That's all. It earned 11 battle stars and the Presidential Unit Citation. It was decommissioned shortly after the end of World War II. It was upgraded and modernized and then recommissioned in the early 1950s as an attack carrier. It eventually became an anti-submarine carrier known as a CVS. No, that's not the drugstore. As you know, the rudder is what will take your ship into a safe a harbors or an uncharted water. Here is the helm that uh, controls the rudder, the most crucial uh, part of the ship. And here's where the captain would be, uh, actually right at this point, navigating the ship right from here. As you can see, this is the uh, captain's docking bridge. He would sit in this chair and actually dock this ship from this point. You can imagine uh, the uh, level of expertise it would take uh, to do that from this uh, chair. And that's what he did, to transfer the uh, uh, ship from point A to B at the great, right from this location. This actually allowed the skipper uh, the opportunity to see the pier uh, when he was docking. So he had visual contact, uh, just like uh, parking your vehicle. He could see where he was going, right from this point, looking out the window. The USS Yorktown, or the CV-10, was the 10th aircraft carrier to serve in the United States Navy. The length of the ship is 872 feet, and then in 1956 became 880 feet. The beam, or the waterline, is 93 feet. It holds a draft of 30 feet, and it displaces 27,000 tons of water. Card room, come on. <laughs> the radar scope provided a visual location of ships or aircraft relative to the ship. The radar was also used for coastal navigation. All right, here's the flag plot room. Here's where they plotted the course for the next day, right from here. When uh, she was recommissioned, uh, she uh, served in the Vietnam War, in which she earned five battle stars. Later in her career as a recovery ship, 
for the Apollo 8 space mission and was also used in the movie Torah, 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 which recreated the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Later in her career, she served as a recovery ship for the Apollo 8 space mission. Do you remember that? You may have. This was the mission that took three days to travel to the moon. It orbited 10 times over the course of 20 hours, during which the crew made a Christmas Eve TV broadcast in which they read the first 10 verses from the book of Genesis. A very auspicious time to say something. The three of us selected to read from the Old Testament uh, and we had it in fireproof paper in the back of our flight manual. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. America, how far have we departed? Our astronauts, when they landed on the moon, what was the first thing they did? They opened their Bible and they read from the book of Genesis. At the time of the, the broadcast, it was the most watched TV program ever in the history of American television. Who was an atheist, uh, and I don't have anything against atheists, but she sued us for the uh, mixing of uh, 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 church and state. And she said uh, that was inappropriate. Maybe it was, I don't know. Welcome to the USS Yorktown. This great ship that defended our nation. Now over here we see the bridge right here. That's uh, the Admiral and, and the other uh, high-ranking officers uh, had to steer this ship into dangerous waters several times. It actually was commissioned in 1943, uh, right during World War II, and served uh, in those great battles. The Yorktown's Service history is amazing. World War II, over and over in 1944, 45, 46. Throughout all these years, she was commissioned for various targets in and out of the war. She was commissioned in the waters of Japan, Okinawa. Post-World War II, she was commissioned later in San Francisco and then ultimately brought to her resting place now in Charleston, South Carolina. She spent some time in the San Francisco Bay and then to Long Beach, California. And in 1964 and 65, deployment brought Yorktown her first real involvement in the Vietnam War. She conducted a series of special operations in the South China Sea, in the waters near Vietnam. Since 1975 to the present day, Yorktown was declared a National Historic Landmark. We highly recommend you bring your family to visit her right down the road there from Fort Sumner. You could see her right at the Patriots Point Naval and Maritime Museum at the shores of Charleston, South Carolina. Welcome to the U.
USS Flight Deck and Bridge. Over here we see some of the great aircraft, the Intruder, uh, the Kruger, the Skyhawk, the Stearman, the Huey, the Sea Cobra, the Sea King, the Viking, the Hornet, and the Wildcat. Some of the great aircraft that defended our nation. And over here you can see an aircraft with Marines written on the side to celebrate and honor the great fighting forces here in America, our armed forces. Here we have the Sea King helicopter, a rescue vehicle during the uh, Vietnam War to bring many wounded soldiers back to uh, camp. Also, it's been used as a presidential uh, helicopter. It was actually a duplicate of what was used for Apollo 8 uh, when uh, that aircraft uh, landed and we retrieved our, our astronauts uh, from the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Here's the uh, Sky Warrior, you can see it right here. Came into commission in 1956, and it uh, was actually a strategic bomber of uh, this vessel here. And it had a nuclear uh, payload. Uh, and as you can see, it, uh, it was used and it had an adaptability. Uh, it was called the Whale because of its extreme capabilities. This was used to uh, combat the growing uh, Soviet Union submarine threat, and it would track down uh, the submarines uh, in the ocean. Here's the uh, F-14 Tomcat, uh, one of our primary fighters, and was used to uh, track down uh, the enemy. This aircraft was armed with Phoenix air-to-air -air missiles. We're at the uh, Medal of Honor Museum right here at the uh, USS Yorktown. Come on, join me and check out this great place that honors our individuals. Can we have to take it through? Freedom means that I can vote for the person I want to vote for, and if I don't like the person that's running, I can vote. To be myself. able to vote means you have a voice in your government. We're very lucky to be able to vote because so many people do not have that right. Freedom is, is everything. As a young boy, I actually uh, had the opportunity uh, to meet John Kennedy. I was about 12 years old and he came through Buffalo, uh, New York in his motorcade. And uh, as you see this right here, where he quotes from him, a nation reveals itself not only by the men uh, it produces, but also by the men it honors, the men it remembers. Not all Medal of Honor recipients were men. Some were just young boys. And William Willie Johnson was only 12 years old when he received the Medal of Honor. He is the youngest to receive the Medal of Honor. Thank you for joining us on this exclusive tour of the USS Yorktown here in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, we salute our armed forces. Thank you so much to the families of those who served on this great ship here, the USS Yorktown. And it stands here as a memorial uh, to the heroes of our great nation uh, to defend our liberty. God bless you.